Well, hello and welcome back. Um, I am going to be doing a brief video on these Klipsch SB1s today. Uh, these are a used pair of, I think these are five and a quarter inch bookshelf speakers from Klipsch from around the early 2000s. Um, I bought these as a supplemental pair to another pair that I have um, that I'm quite fond of. I'm not exactly sure. I feel like these are smaller. I think the other SB ones I have are six, maybe six and a half inch. Uh, either way, that's neither here nor there. These showed up pretty well packaged, but unfortunately there was styrofoam laying face to face on these speakers. And as you can tell, the cones are well in. Uh, and if I were to bring one of these speakers up, you will see that they do actually kind of rest where they shouldn't be. So I'm thinking the magnet is broken off of the basket or something like that. Either way, I'm gonna try to repair them because it doesn't look like they're completely totaled. And I really like these speakers. So I'd like to be able to reuse them if possible. So I'm gonna go grab some tools. It looks like these are probably Torx T25 or T20 and get these pulled out of the, uh, the actual uh, cabinets and we'll see what we're working with. Hopefully they're fixable. Um, these uh, baskets are plastic, which not a huge fan of that. There is the part number. If you are curious, it is 209-420-2000. Uh, so I'm guessing actually <laughs> that was probably April 20th, 2000. The part number, I guess, is 031210. Uh, I'll pull the crossover out too uh, in the back just so we can take a look at that. Uh, poly insulation, cheapish stuff, uh, push terminals, but decently thick cabling. The build quality, it's actually got a brace, and this MDF feels like it's at least 5 eighths. So for the power handling of the speaker, I'm not offended by that. Um, but as you can see, the, the basket is not happy so i'm gonna pull the other one out too get these terminals pulled off and uh we'll see what we can do here nothing wrong with the tweeters just for the sake of being thorough there you go and maybe that is a part number but we've got 450-603-0000031210 so there we have the actual part number of the speaker it's an sb1 black the other pair I have doesn't have, I'm sorry, doesn't have these little tripod screws in. I'm guessing that's for wall mounting. Um, these do feel like a newer, more cost-cut, lower-end version. It does look like there's gold-plated terminals on not only the binding posts here, but also on the speaker uh, voice coil driver as well. So there's aspects of this I actually quite like. Um, but... I can't say I'm a huge fan of the plastic basket on there, especially since it broke. Um, but I'll rip the crossover out. We'll take a look at it. I don't have high hopes for this. I'm expecting to see a lot of electrolytic capac uh, capacitors, little iron cores, push-on connectors, things like that. But let's take a look. So yeah, we're seeing obviously dissimilar metals on the binding posts. Uh, sand cast resistor. There is actually a poly cap, which I'm impressed by. Uh, this is a 0.7 micro Henry. It looks like an iron core inductor. Uh, and I've got an, a 0.3. And we've got a 100, oh, see, sorry, a 14 microfarad capacitor, as well as a 3.5 microfarad. Um, so, is that? Iron core? I can't actually tell if there's a core inside of that. I'm guessing that it is. Um, sorry. So it, it's likely that the electrolytic and the larger microhenry uh, rated inductor, which is very worryingly precarious on here. Uh, I'm going to ohm that out before I put it back in. Anyway, this is for the uh, woofer, and this is for the tweeter. So it's nice to see a poly cap in here. Um, these are obviously pretty budget speakers. Really, really thin um, wires. Printed circuit board's not the best either. You can see a 
part number down in there if you need it. 249-1300046. Uh, not terrible, but yeah, I definitely want to check out... Sorry. Sorry about my videography. It's hard to watch and look at the same time. It looks like that's okay, but I don't like how much wobbling around that's doing. That should really be hot glued down, and probably was. So I'm going with Loctite Cyanoacrylate uh, to fasten the basket back down. And once I'm done with that, I don't think there's room, unfortunately, to reinforce it with a big glob of epoxy. So I'm going to have to probably just call it at that. But this should be... It shouldn't break again at the seam. This should be stronger than the plastic. So I'm not going to be working these things super hard either. And if I can get a second life out of them just with this simple little fix, I'll take it. Uh, I'm putting them back upside down into the cabinets here because I don't want any pressure on the uh, butyl surround or the uh, the cone. The voice coil's got nice free movement in there. No binding or anything. So I think we dodged a bullet. But we're going to get them setting now. We'll leave them for a couple days and then we'll try them out. And we'll uh, wait for them to cure. <sighs> I'm optimistic that that will fix it. And these should be a decent little pair of uh, bookshelves. Just for a casual listing. Um, these would very likely benefit from uh, you know, weighting down the baskets with some tack. Uh, changing out the insulation. Maybe adding another brace. Upgrading the wiring. Upgrading the binding posts. Um, upgrading the crossover components. Uh, just moving the uh, 0.3 micro Henry over to an air core would probably be pretty huge. Super glue cured. Time to put them back together and give them a shot. <laughs> 